I'm Noah. I'm Jolly. And you're watching 10 Things You Didn't Know About Bad Omens. Bad Omens was originally the track title for the song Glass Houses. It was not yes. the band name at first. Yes. Did even we even had the words "bad omens" in that song? The lyrics. Yeah. Like yeah. Like, yeah. They were, and and we changed the song in order to change the band name to Bad Omens. That's what happened. That's o- right. Originally, the name was Children. Yes. Our, our band name. Yes. Before <laughs> we were out of the gate or anything, or anybody knew about our band, we were presenting ourselves as, as children without the vowels. Without the vowels. Children without the vowels. Yes. That was, that was when that was so long ago. That was when it was cool to have no vowels in your band name, or yeah, or like turning the V's into A's or whatever, you know. Yeah. And Ash from Sumerian actually, he suggested he suggested we. Uh, Change the band name to Bad Omens and just pick a different name for the song. Yeah, so yeah, we went with that one, and, and it sounds really good. Bad Omens has always yeah. been rolls great. off the tongue nicely. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Even though I'm, I'm a firm believer in like, it doesn't matter what your band name is called. That's like, true. You make your name cool. Y- like, yeah, absolutely. Like, if your name is really dumb, and even even if you have good music, that name will just sound cool. That's true. I don't know if a lot of people knew about this, but I am the only one that's not an American. I'm from Sweden. So I, think our, I think our like diehard fans know. Like, probably. Yeah. They probably hear it. Of also, course. sometimes when I'm talking, I'll, I'll <laughs> hop back and I'll use words <laughs> that doesn't exist. And that affected us a lot in the beginning of the band because when you first joined and we were writing and, and recording the album, you were just on a travel visa. Yeah. So you could only be here for three months at a time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's when we, we just kind of dove in and, and actually wrote a record in, in, in our drummer's basement yep. in a month. And ever since that, it, that's never happened again. <laughs> we didn't write that much. <laughs> no, that we, I mean, we haven't really sat down and tried. We, we, yeah. we have a studio now, but yeah. It was, I guess, maybe it was just something. I had to fucking leave. We had to do it. Mm-hmm. There was no, like, ever since that, I've lived with Noah. We always, like, we've been yeah. traveling and living. So we always had this, like, we can do this whenever. But I guess that first album was just like yeah. You were he was here like just in in the perfect window to write and record the first album, the self titled, and then he yeah. had to go back home until his work visa had cleared to come back and tour with us. Yeah. So you so you missed the first two tours. Yeah. We self produced our second album, Finding God Before God Finds Me, our sophomore album ourselves. Yes, we did. Um, in our garage studio in our last house, we have a home studio and pretty much everywhere we live because we've lived together for almost four years now, I think. Yeah. And our last house, we had our studio in the garage. And that is where we produced and engineered pretty much all of the all of Finding God Before God Finds that's, Me. Yeah, that's where Except I for the drums, in. right? Drums, yeah, we, we did go to a, a nice studio for that. Mm-hmm. And I had to do some parts in Sweden after a tour because I had to stay put for a few months. So I did record like a little bit in Sweden and I had to go into like my parents' basement and like borrow microphones to do some backup shit and you know we kind of just kind of made it happen the way we had to and uh, didn't worry about it too much and it came together pretty nicely our bassist Nick is a, is a tattoo artist yes professional tattoo artist yeah, he really works at one. Tantrum Tattoo in Richmond Virginia he's obviously not here right now in, <laughs> in Reseda California yes he lives in Virginia but he is a tattoo artist he's really good he's done a lot of my tattoos actually he did a, a, a tattoo of my friend Brian that's on my leg a little moon lady, a lady in a moon that's also on my leg, and he did my little Naruto Leaf Village tattoo on my knuckle. And he does a lot of uh, like graphic works, too. He did our crown, didn't he? Yeah, our he, he, he designed yeah. the crown logo that we've been using for the whole second album. Cycle. Yeah, so he's got, he's got a good eye for stuff like that. It's Number five, Folio, Nick Folio, our drummer. We have two Nicks in the band. Uh, he graduated high school like right before we recorded our self-titled album in 2015. We like, I think we had gone to his actual graduation ceremony from high school. I'm talking about. We we had an apartment in uh, in Van Nuys, it's like you know Van Nuys. Mm. It was no AC. It was just crazy. It was yeah, and it was at the time. Tags on the building. At the time, we were a five piece. Um, that yeah. was before Vincent left the band, and so I was all five of us pretty much living in this two bedroom apartment in Van Nuys with no AC, along mm. with all of our gear. All of the merch that we had ordered for our first tour ever, like, yeah, the, two the people sleeping in the living room. Kitchen living room was just packed with gear. Yeah. I know there was there was a was, bike in the, in the roof. 
It was crazy. It was very crazy. That was when we had the bright idea that all of us should move out to California. Yeah. When we had started the band and it definitely did it did its purpose. I mean, it did definitely do its purpose. You have to start somewhere, but that was definitely the yeah. ditch. <laughs> that was that was helpful at the time being when we were <laughs> that first was starting the ditches. out. But it's, you know, <laughs> I didn't think about it at the time as being a problem. I was just like, this sucks, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, it was just it yeah. was what it was. It was exciting, all the same, you know. Yeah. We were just getting, getting oh, started. Dope. Martial law in Ukraine. That was very intense. Yes, <laughs> actually, that was pretty crazy. It was like being, you know, pretty much being in, co- in, in a country that just declared war or whatever. Yeah, it was. We had it was late 2018. I think it was November, late November or something. And we had some shows in Ukraine. It was our first time there. It was amazing, by the way. But after our final show there, our promoter and our friend that was kind of escorting us around the country while we were visiting and, and playing there, he pretty much pulled us off stage and told us that the there was some issues with Russia, like their Coast Guard firing on the Russian naval or the Ukrainian naval vessels yeah. or something. And there was just all this like rising tension between Ukraine and Russia. And they implemented martial law right before we were supposed to leave. Yeah, well, I think it, it was during our set. Yeah, though, it was so like during our set that the actual like action went down. There, w- there was like some some shots fired or something. Yeah, yeah. it was it was crazy. But we love Olive Garden. Yes, Olive Garden <laughs> is a good stop on tour. This is sure. a, a frequent stop. Olive Garden and kombucha, the oh, two yeah. things that we love the most we on tour. Up kombucha ever since I found out about it, pretty much, and mm-hmm. we just kind of drank it. It's like this is great. Olive Garden. Olive Garden. Yeah, we just e- every off day we convene at Olive Garden and. Get unlimited soup and salads and breadsticks. Yeah. It's just a nice to be able to sit down and actually get served something that isn't, you know, fast food. McDonald's or, or Taco yeah, Bell. And, and, sal- and soups are pretty, you know, they, they, yeah. they work. And, and I try to get one of every soup every time we go. Yeah. Because it's unlimited, you know, why not? And then you just fill, we just fill up on breadsticks and everybody has like yeah. two soups and then it wasn't worth it. But you there know. you have it. <laughs> Kombucha and Olive Garden endorse yeah. us. Yeah, in our, in our tour with uh, all the remains in the Kuna Coil, mm-hmm. we, uh, we got... We were stuck in that blizzard. A really bad blizzard. A, a blizzard that was just like... We were stuck in Jamestown, yeah. South Dakota, I think, or North Dakota, whichever one of those Dakotas Jamestown is in, but it was all over Dakota, uh, the Dakotas, and yeah, we were driving till 6 a.m. trying to make the next show going like 30 miles an hour because it was just blizzard of, of snow like just coming down. To the point where we had to pull over to the side of the road and just basically leave it there. Yeah, we were picked up because we couldn't move anymore. We were picked up by uh, uh, what's it? It was like it was like some big like mechanical construction uh, facility or something that we had ended up stopping next to. And we yes. went in and asked them for help, and that was like the perfect p- place to be next to because they have big you know forklifts and and, and construction yeah. vehicles like you know they I don't know what they're called, but I remember now because they <laughs> we, we had turned off to get in there to get help. And what they did was they pushed us back out, right? Yeah. They, they like, here you go, guys. <laughs> they pushed us back out into the road and then just sent us on our way and we got stuck like 500 feet later. So yeah. we just went back and we're like, can you please just take us to a hotel? We, we got to leave it. And it was scary, though, just leaving the van in the, in the trailer with all of our equipment and everything just in the middle of yeah, the side of the highway. Just like, hey, please loot us. Yeah, it was But at was the same scary. time, like, who would? Because yeah, it was be outside. It was, you would freeze to death trying to get into our trailer and steal... Yeah. But yeah, we we lost we missed like three shows on that tour and uh-huh. got stuck in Jamestown, South Dakota during a snowstorm. It's our second to latest music video that we put out for, yep. for Dethrone. We shot it in our house in our dining room. Yeah, which in was our, in, our, in our in our dining room. Interesting, <laughs> because as you can see in the video, the ground is covered in you know like dirt and soil. We live with. Uh, our good friend Ori McGinnis, who, who shoots all of the Bad Omens music videos, every music video you've seen, he shot True. and directed. Because we lived together, we got to kind of coordinate and plan how we would shoot the video. And we ended up just realizing that based on the treatment we had all come up with, that we were able to pull it off in our house if we just blacked out the room and you know brought a tarp with soil into the dining room to act as the ground in, in, in the video where the video is supposed to take place. And that was... I mean, yeah. I mean, just take another peep at the video mm-hmm. with that in mind. Everything yeah. was recorded inside. Well, it, actually, the, the soil and, like, the tarps we used on the ground, they were the same soil oh. and, and props from the We Came As Romans video. Right, yeah. For, for uh, I forgot the song. We, but we, we it's we the one where they're, like, in a cave and stuff. They they also shot that yeah. in our house. So we reused it. But, um, yeah, it was... 
it was very stressful because we obviously live here and Jolly and I especially are neat freaks. I'm, I'm totally the petty roommate that sends like passive aggressive texts in the group chat like, hey, what's up yeah, with that clean. crock pot of chili that's yeah. been there for a few days. Um, so like having the most dirty music video we've ever shot. Being having a whole room <laughs> just being surrendered just, to shit. Yeah, just filled with dirt and like paint and clays and blood. I think there was like, there was honey, I think, involved. I mean, yeah, it was gross. No, what was we, that thing you, that old people that I had in my mouth? It was so gross. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Old like, people in your mouth. No, yeah, it's like some <laughs> kind of cooking thing. And, and oh, it was like barbecue sauce, and it was supposed to look like mud or something. Yeah. I can't remember how we how we propped that bug scene. It was so good. Yeah, and and we even lit one of the speakers on fire. Right. In in the first like the intro sequence of the video with the title card and everything, the speaker that that kind of explodes on fire. That was that was real. That's real. That yeah, was not that effects. Looks it, lo- it looks fake. It looks so good, good, but that I was all that practical. Was the Whoa! And so that, that's like a speaker that Ori uses on other shoots for his like PA system for playback. And somehow the speaker still functions. It still works, <laughs> even though we lit it on fire and covered it in uh, what is it? Flammable liquid. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> basically, just set it on fire and put shit in it and just made it look cool. Because we were gonna retire it. He was just like, yeah, this is obviously a prop. Yeah, we're let's just use it as a prop, and then it ended up still working. So I think he still uses it. Working, you don't have to worry about it, I guess. So.